Dinner and a Book is supported by the Rex and Alice A. Martin Foundation of Elkhart, celebrating the spirit of Alice Martin and her love of good food and good friends. In Veronica Rossi's revolutionary novel, Rebel Spy, life hands out unexpected chances for an unknown, uneducated girl. What can she do with this chance? Even if you are uneducated, could you convince people that you are worthy of a huge inheritance? Laura Horst and I are about to attempt such a feat, or at least we will talk about it, right? <laughs> Welcome, Laura. It's good Thank to have you, you good back. Good to be here. Yes. Nice. So we have a very unusual story. Not too many books written about spies, women spies of the revolutionary period. That's right. And you know, Laura, there is there is a key to what's going to happen in this book. It's right inside the cover, and okay. I do want to read it. Bear okay. with me. Bear Absolutely. with me here. I was made entirely of fabrications, my gown, my petticoats, my name, even the very blood in my veins. But here was my chance. Whatever anxieties I had, I would leave in the past. Everything would be perfect now. I sank into a deep curtsy. Then I arose a lady. Ooh, sounds intriguing, doesn't it? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It was a good book. It's this, a really good book. Well, this Franny, she's Franny and she's also Emmeline, isn't she? Right. Tell us who <laughs> Franny is. Well, Franny was a young woman who was a wrecker. She dove. She dove to seven fathoms. So you've heard, heard about this maybe where they're diving the wrecks to find the treasure, um, things like yes, that. Yes, yes. And so, she was forced to do it by her mother's right. horrible... Step, well, her stepfather. Her step her stepfather, stepfather, right. And he'd sit and wait for her to come up with whatever she found, and she was forced to do this. Right. Her name is Franny at Franny. that point. Mm -hmm. And then she becomes Emmeline. Tell us what happens that <laughs> Franny becomes Emmeline. Well, Franny, she found an opportunity. She wanted to escape from her stepfather, who was just horrible to her and her yes. mother had died so she was a little panicked when he said he wanted her he wanted to marry her so she knew she had to get away and then she did but it was really unusual circumstances she was diving in a storm yes and um she ended up pushing the pushing the stepfather out of the boat but then when she washed ashore, what happened? What did you, who did she find? She found out that she was named Emmeline and what, Emmeline Coates. Mm -hmm. And uh, she found out this Emmeline Coates had drowned and she was set to inherit lots of money from her father. Right. And people mistake Franny, is it Franny? Yeah. Franny for Emmeline and they think she is the one who is now going right. to inherit all of this money from her wealthy family. Right. The family's all dead, and even, even the young girl, Emmeline, is dead, but not Frankie. Franny. Not Franny. And not they, Frankie. so Franny decided to take Emmeline's clothes and become her yes. to survive and escape Sewell, her Stepfather. He's I mean, awful. Stepfather. And he keeps popping up in this book, and I think, oh, get rid of him. But she is a smart person. Yeah. But she realizes <clears throat> she's going to be staying with a man who's been appointed to be her guardian. And he's very educated. And his friends are very educated. And she's going to be placed in the protection of another man who's very educated. Right. They're all very wealthy. And she thinks, Oh my gosh, I am just a wrecker. Yeah. I don't know how to do anything. She didn't know how to curtsy. That's right. She didn't know how to be, she didn't know how to engage in small talk. That's right. I mean, she was a real original, wasn't she? Yeah. 
So she, this was in the time of the revolution. Yes. Right? American so, Revolution. Mm -hmm. Should we talk about our food? Oh, let's do it. Let's do it. We've okay. got to get to the food. Right. What are you making? Well, I'm going to do some malt cider. And um, that time of, um, in that time you would have had alcoholic cider, but we're just going to do some malt cider, sort of nice for the fall and winter. And I'll be starting with some cider and then adding a few spices, and then we'll just let it simmer for about 20 minutes. And then I'm also going to make some molasses cookies. What are you making, Gail? Well, I'll tell you. I am making a corn potato bacon soup, which was very prevalent in those days and really? very simple. And the more you read about this, I think I should put this in my repertoire. It is healthy. It's got some starch in it. But I have started with the bacon. As a matter of fact, Laura, well, I started it because I didn't want to have to keep my eye on it. Uh, and it looks good. Uh, and we added a little butter here to keep it shiny and, you know, not burnt. So that actually this uh, bacon is cooked. We're going to add some chopped garlic right from the garden and uh, chopped onions. It's, it's one small onion. And this will cook. Well, I'm going to add a little more bacon. Then we'll add potatoes and we'll let it cook for about 20 minutes. And then we will add, what's my liquid? Ah, oh my goodness, cream. Now, they could have Great. gone out and got it right from the cow. That's right. Uh, at my house growing up, we didn't have cream. Uh, and so we would have milk. And you can do this however you want. You can make it with skim milk. You can make it with lactose-free milk. Sure. You can make it with whatever you want, if you want cream. But I have cream, and I'm going to put it in. Uh, so it will be very rich. And then I'll add... I'll add some thyme and some bay leaves, and we'll let this cook, and a little flour to, to thicken it. Uh, and this is something they would have on a farm. Uh, you'd have your bacon, you'd have your onions. I mean, wonderful. Have your little garden, kitchen garden. You just yeah. go out there and pluck some garlic and some thyme I have here. We're going to put Thanks. that in. Great. So I, I'll be watching this as we talk about this, but we're sure. in, here we have Franny slash. I should tell you, I added oh, just yeah. a few pieces of orange peel, a little handful of cloves and some cinnamon sticks. And those, we're just gonna let them simmer. I think you could also add ginger. If you wanted to add ginger, you could add some nutmeg, kind of what you have on hand. And I'm sure if they were making in those times, it kind of depended on what they, what they could get and what they had. Now what's um, this right in here? Is that a this nutmeg? This is a nutmeg. Ooh, you know that, that is like gold, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Isn't that in great? those days, you know, they mm -hmm. had they had to go to the in, to Indonesia to get some of these things. Well, and there was a part in the book where they were talking about how the supply ships were being stopped and they were in New York and they just had almost nothing to eat. They had no firewood. It was it was harrowing. Very harrowing. Um, I'm going to put the molasses in. I already have some butter and eggs um, together, and I'm going to put in about a quarter cup of molasses. And um, I don't know if you like molasses, but it has a really interesting taste. And if you don't like molasses, you probably could use um, sugar, or I mean, I guess you could use honey, or maybe you could use a caro syrup. If they obviously wouldn't have had that then, but honey they would have. Honey um, appears in many recipes of that era. Yeah. And it's wonderful. And it's very healthy. We did a cake for a, a Shakespeare pr a book, and it was topped and mixed with honey, and it was so good. Try yeah. it instead of sugar, which is not good for you. And then what I'm adding in is a flour mixture that's flour and some of these spices. So also cinnamon, um, cloves, nutmeg, um, things like that. Uh, and I'll just stir this dough up. It was very easy to do, and the recipe actually even has um, uh, where you can mix up the dry ingredients, put them in a jar, which is what I did, and then you add your butter and sugar and molasses later, and you can, you can have about three batches worth, actually, so that's kind of neat. Of course, you, you probably could have put the the flour and save that in a in a jar. And today you could put you can make the dough and put it in the freezer if you don't 
have that's time right. to make all that's the right. cookies. We have that's so many right. things that are so helpful now. Um, so, and I'm going to add a little uh, flour in here because eventually we're going to thicken this. And I've got a little butter in here. So we're going to cook this a little bit. Uh, I'm going to add more potatoes. I want this to cook at least 20 minutes. So that's why I'm hurrying to get all these ingredients in here. But this would be a very typical, oh, but I think also a very special meal, don't you? I mean, oh, yeah. I think for the time. This is even starting to smell good already. I that's need great. to put in, oh, here they are, two bay leaves. And toward the end, I will add some fresh, or you can use dried thyme. And we have some vegetable broth. We need that. Of course, I've got a box of it. I probably would... I have it somewhere in, in the cupboard, maybe, yeah. uh, otherwise. Uh, we are getting things ready here. You're, you're all set with your cookie dough? Yeah, your... I, the cookie dough is going to be ready pretty soon, and I'll, we'll, we'll make those, and I'll show you how you can get those made ready. Um, she said this thing about swimming with the sharks. Yeah. Do you have that quote? I have that quote. Yeah. I'd swum with deadly sharks and stolen from deadlier men. I'd survive hurricanes, war, and even love. But I didn't know if I'd survive this. What is the this in this story? Well, wasn't it relationships with men or yeah. being married? And being a very upper-class woman, which right. she had to right. learn from scratch. She did. She did have people that she liked help her. It yeah. was amazing. But they never knew her background. No, they she didn't. She would watch people. She would watch them, and she'd mimic how they ate, how they walked. Right. And if she trusted someone, she would ask them, what do you think about the way I look? Right. So, and we're going to think about how our food looks in a minute. We're going to take a break. We want to show you some pictures of the Revolutionary War. It would be nice to find one with a woman spy in the picture, but good luck with that. And then we'll be <laughs> right back. our meal here for the 1700s. I'm adding some corn right from my garden, don't you know. And we're going to add that. You can add cream corn. You can add hunks of uh, corn on the cob. Any way you like to do it. But it's good. And this is a hearty meal. And I'm going to pick up on this one because I'm going to redesign what I'm making for dinner at home. It's going to become more simplified. This and looks this really will lovely. Be really great. Yeah. So we know now that she is surrounded by very wealthy people. She's mm -hmm. keeping her eyes open. She does miss her old life in some ways, doesn't she? Yeah, she sort of talked about losing her, her old self, yeah. her, who she really was as Franny, because now she has taken on the whole persona, thinking, everything of Emily, right? An upper-class yeah. woman. Right. And this woman... Uh, she found out I was a. I was, if this young Duncan asks me to marry him, I'm going to be a decoration, a jewel to be worn. What does she actually mean about proper women? And they're going to be a, something to look at, right? Right, right. They they don't 
they're trapped, sort of. They can't yeah. be themselves, and they're totally directed by their husband or their father or their guardian or whoever. And they even tell them what right? they can say right. and can't say. And she's right. used to being, you know, she's kind of a, she's got this mouth that can swear and be right. naughty. And she misses that, doesn't she? Well, I think she is, yeah. I she's think she does between. miss, she's caught between to try to figure out who she is and what she wants to be and do. Um, I'm going to work on these cookies a little bit. I'm just taking some of the batter and the, the dough that we made, and I'm, um, I have a little scoop, but you can just use a spoon too. And I'm putting a, about a ta tablespoon or so, maybe, I guess it's about, yeah, about a tablespoon. And then we're rolling them in this raw sugar. So, which just makes them really yummy. Divine. Um, oh, yeah. it's wonderful. I mean, it, Franny probably didn't, wouldn't know how to make those nice cookies, well, would she? And as Emmeline, she, or Emmy, she wouldn't, anyway, no. somebody else would be making them. you know, them. I was struck by, she had all these support people for her. So, um, she didn't really have support people when she was... Uh, Franny. Oh, but no. as Emmeline, she would have somebody to help her get dressed. She would have somebody to um, her make jewels. her food, yes. take her places. She couldn't go by herself. Um, right. And actually, that's sort of how she got into spying, right? She went to the bookseller. And met up and found out he was finding out information about troop movement, British troop movement. And she decided, hmm, this is interesting. And then she meets Duncan, this young man that the whole family the whole thinks family. she might eventually right. marry. She starts listening to him and what he says with his friends. And she slowly becomes a reporter. She reports it to someone else in right. the town. Right. And uh, she rather likes this. It's a yeah. little bit more like her old life. And I had no idea there were women spies. I mean, I guess... You just have to think about it, but oh, obviously yes. they were. had to have ways to get intelligence from one place to another, and you know they didn't have the internet; they couldn't send an no. email. So they would just cozy right. up. Somebody's having a discussion, and, they'd and they would, hmm, oh, troop movements, right? Oh, who's going to be where? She reported it back, and you know this really it pulled her in and got her interested. And she said, maybe I, I look like a jewel ready to be, you know, something designer. Uh, but she now thinks life is worth living. I mean, in the sense of, I believe in this. And I, she didn't come right out and say, I'm going to be a spy. Or, she just yeah. did. Yeah. Or I can make a difference yes. for her. That, she, that made a difference to her as well. And, and I also, um, I, she got the idea of sort of the patriots versus the loyalists yes. from one of the first people she met on the ship once she was impersonating Emmeline Coates. Yes, the la -di da lady. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that was Asa. 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 And yeah. very good looking, mm -hmm. very and, smart. And he helped her. He did help her. He would. She yeah. kind of confided in him. He said, if you're going to be a grand dame, he didn't use those words, you have to walk with purpose. You can't jerk around and, 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 and just look like you don't know what you're doing. Right. You have to be purposeful. You have to walk elegantly. And he even had her try it for him in one of the ship holes. And, uh, you know, they were, <coughs> right. he was helping her. He was telling her, you know, how to behave and don't be so exuberant. <coughs> the best thing yeah. for a lady right. of means is to look like I could care less. Right. Right? Right. And I have everything I want. But, you know, she's this woman that was a diver, you know, what do you right. a tracker? A uh, wrecker. A wrecker. Because they dove wrecks. So, yes. Yeah, I, I hadn't heard of that term before. So, But it is interesting. You will hear more about it now that you've heard about it here. <laughs> because you're aware of how these people that didn't have any means would save themselves. That's right. They would dive, women would dive, and they'd bring it back, and through someone else it would be sold, and that's Franny's right. life. Right. And the other half, that hadn't been very difficult, for not getting Frankie <clears throat> mixed up with Emmeline. And mm -hmm. the men, she likes Duncan, he is a gentleman. Mm -hmm. She likes a um, Asa? Yeah, Asa? Asa. 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 Um, and he, he is so clever, he's smart, 
and she confides in him and he does help her and they meet up and then they get separated. He gets beaten up when the British uh, come, come in and, on, on, on board. board their ship. That's right. They board the it's, American it's ship, those, those nasty Americans, and they weed out the men they want to take for themselves, yeah, right. for their own army. And Asa is one, and he gets pummeled by the British. Uh, so we have that going on. We have... Uh, it is interesting. The second time, I know you had to turn the book in. Mm -hmm. uh, I just told them at the library, this is going to be about two months late. I hope you don't mind. And they <laughs> said, keep it, because I said it's for dinner and a book. And uh, go keep it, they said. Um, and the second time around, it made more sense to me. And uh, I, I kind of found it appealing and fascinating and made me think how many people in the United States came from this kind of background. Many men, but how many women? Uh, well, and maybe changed their identity Yes, when they came. Came to the new world. Came to the new world. Left all of who they were before behind. You could take on the name or some kind yeah, of name like the mistress named. you had back in Scotland yeah, right. and you took the heirs, you took, and you could actually get away with it right and uh, you know i i find i would that would be fascinating to me to do a book on that but so you're going to put these these I'll are put in, these the in the oven, oven and at 375 for about seven minutes or so all right they're going to spread out a little you see i really i uh you know spread them out on the pan because they do sort of fall and spread out a little bit but they become a really nice crisp cookie and I think you'll like it. Oh, I know I'd like it. And talk a little bit about your little vegetable garden Oh, yeah, garden and I want to check there. on this. Oh, this looks really great. And it smells wonderful. It does. Look at those That'll be cute so cute little nice. cloves swimming around yeah. in there at half a fan. And you were talking about this. There are some pickled beets and some pickled um, dill beans is what I, yes. I would call those. And they would have used, and when, when I did a little bit of research, they would have pickled or preserved whatever kind of food they could. And so maybe they had some beets. I don't know. Maybe they had beans, but that's, those well, are some pickled have. vegetables. Oh, and sure. you have to have a way to preserve them to eat them later. Yes. And so here yeah. are your, your, your preserved, right. your jars of preserved beets and green beans and even a little seed there for decoration. Oh, I'm envious. And this looks really lovely. Well, let's, and you let's know what? smell it. I had a little error. I should have made the potatoes in smaller bites. But you know, I think it'll be good. Today, nobody cares. You can make them yeah. big, you can have them small, yeah. minuscule. In any case, we're going to continue with our preparation and set the table right here. We're inviting That's you right. to come into what? Our kitchen. Um, a revolutionary, revolutionary kitchen. kitchen. Yes, whether yeah. it's Franny or Emmeline, and we're going to talk about what happens here toward the end of this story. We'll be right back. Our book is Rebel Spy by Veronica Rossi. Here is this wonderful meal from the 1700s. Right. Right from your garden. <laughs> yes, exactly. And yours. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you know, you do an excellent job of preparing your own food. It's just terrific. You grow it and prepare it. We have finished our, our soup here, this wonderful corn chowder. And I have some mold cider. We have some ready for us to take a taste and some molasses cookies just ready fresh out of the oven. And then we even have some pickled vegetables that um, I made, but that would be typical maybe of that time. Typical, typical. Did you ever go into the basement of someone who maybe now is in their 90s? They would have jars of these things right. and live on it all winter right. long. And I just wanted to say I enjoyed the book. I really did. I thought it was good. So it, did I. It's fiction, but it's based on a true story. Based on the story of 355, uh, a spy, who 355 spy. meant lady, a mm. woman that was of means, that was a spy. Yes. For and Washington. She was, she was that. She yeah. spied for George Washington. Washington. Yeah. And 
the, the end of the book, we're going to let you read the book for the ending, but we do get into spy ships, the not spy ships, prisoner Prison. ships, where oh. they have thousands of men, American men imprisoned, who they're, look like they weigh 80 pounds. They're horrendous. They're horrible. 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 I mean, this soup looks like it's for the king compared to the soup they gave them on these spy ships. Right. Oh, it's yeah. terrible. I'm not even going to tell you what the protein was. But um, did you like the book? I did. I did. I liked the book. And if you like historical fiction, you're going to really like this. It draws you right in. It's a quick read. Um, it is a quick read. Yeah. And yeah. she plays the part very well of two women from two different worlds. And I wish her the very best. Absolutely. And we aren't going to tell you what happens. <laughs> no, no, no. So thank you for joining us today. Laura, thank you. Oh, I'm so glad to be here, Gail. I'm so glad you are here. Absolutely. And thank you for watching. Remember, good food. Mm, good friends. Good books make for a very interesting and good life. We'll see you next time. This WNIT local production has been made possible in part by viewers like you. Thank you. Dinner and a Book is supported by the Rex and Alice A. Martin Foundation of Elkhart, celebrating the spirit of Alice Martin and her love of good food and good friends.